Yo, what is up y'all? My name is Devin and today I'm going to be getting into the nitty gritty about what I wish I knew before I started my transition. But before we get into that, make sure if you're new here, new is not subscribed, you go ahead and press that subscribe button down below to help my channel grow. If you are interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, a meal plan, or a training plan, feel free to email me at devindiscoaching at gmail.com. Let's go ahead and get into the video. I severely romanticized what I thought my life would be like after I was able to start my transition. I realized that I was trans when I was 18, but I wasn't able to really start living as myself until I was 20 years old, right? So for that entire two year period, I was just going so in depth with the fantasy of like, oh, when I start tea, I'm going to look like this. When I'm able to get my haircuts, I'm going to have this going on. My relationship with my girlfriend is going to be like this. Me being able to live as my true self was not going to solve all of my problems. That might sound super simple, but I feel like when you're pre-tea and when you're trying to figure yourself out, you imagine that your life is going to be amazing and, and beautiful and wonderful after you get X thing. And while I'm extremely happy for my life and my life is a million times better than it was when I was not able to transition, I still have problems. I'm still a regular person and I still struggle with dysphoria. Don't think that, oh, when I start T, when I get top surgery, when I'm able to do this, this and that, my life is going to be perfect. Because when you get to that other side and you have the thing that you've been coveting for so long, you might be disappointed. And personally, I got kind of depressed. I was in a slump for about three months after I was able to move out and start tea because I was like, I did the thing I wanted to do and yet I still feel shitty. So remember that your transition is not going to be the answer to all of your problems. This next one is major, 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 and honestly something that we all need to hear. There will be people who support you. I was super jaded. I felt like everybody was just going to view me as like a weird trans person. I would never be able to be friends with cis people as much as I love my community, but I thought that I would be only confined to relating to people who are trans and people who shared my identity. And while that's a huge part of my life, it's also super cool to know that I've met and I am friends with cis people who have nothing to do with the community and who value me as a human being and they don't view me as other because it can kind of feel like us versus them to a certain degree. And I definitely did have that mindset and it made me sort of blocked off towards interfacing with people. But I met several cis people who never once questioned me, who knew I was trans, who saw my before pictures and they're like, okay, and like who fucking cares? You're you, let's keep it moving. Like, what are we gonna do today? So don't confine yourself, don't close yourself off and don't be afraid to interface with people who are not necessarily trans. You could be potentially blocking yourself off from having some amazing friendships or even potentially relationships. This next one, one is for my homies who are kind of early in their transition. Maybe you just started tea. Maybe you just started getting haircuts or maybe you literally just came to terms with the fact that you're trans. Do not rush the process. Okay. I remember when I first started testosterone, I was trying to bump my dosage up every fucking two weeks. I was like, okay, uh, I'm doing 0.2. Maybe I could do 0.3. I'm doing 0.3. Uh, my facial hair is not coming in fast enough. Maybe I can do 0.4. And ultimately I bumped my dosage up so much that I made myself look older within a very short span of time. And a lot of that just naturally happens with testosterone, but you're definitely pushing the envelope when you try to raise your dose and raise your dose and raise your dose. It gets to a point of diminishing return. Have patience and understand that if you're within the normal range, your changes are going to come. You're not going to do anything by blasting your face off with testosterone. If you're within like the 400 to 900 nanograms per deciliter range, you're good. You're not going to achieve anything fucking mind blowing by upping your dose to half a vial of testosterone, which would be hundred milligrams. Have patience. And side note and super sad for me is that I actually triggered androgenic alopecia which is something that I'm genetically predisposed to. What that is is essentially just male pattern baldness. Like I'm not fucking bald as y'all can tell I have hair, but I became a diffuse thinner, right? So what that means is that my hair became super thin, especially towards the front, whereas my curls were growing nice and wholesome and voluminous everywhere else in my head. The hair just kind of stopped growing in the front and that looked weird to me. So I just cut my hair if you guys couldn't tell. I'm just not, you know, super happy with my hair at the moment. And that's something that I triggered by raising the fuck out of my testosterone dosage. Those are three things that I really, really wish I knew before I started my transition, before I started T, before I was able to truly live as Devin. What are some things that you wish you had known before you started your transition? Drop them in the comments because you never, never know who's early on in their journey and this can benefit, okay? If you are interested in coaching, make sure you email me. Follow me on Instagram. That's going to be linked in the description down below. I post my thirst traps. It's definitely worth the follow. And like I always say, Devin loves you. Devin's a dawn and Devin is out of here, boy. Ah.